First up is public comment. This is comment on anything that's not on the agenda. Hi, Trini. It's Robin Goodall on behalf of the library board, just giving to give the weekly update, the monthly update, I guess. Um, okay. We wanted to, we wanted the board to be aware that the library has closed for. I mean, I, I suspect you all know this, but we have closed for um, in person, most in person all electronic actions. I say, um, business is still happening. Um, we are meeting as a board of trustees weekly with Amy to read. Make sure that we are keeping people safe, um, both the employees and the public. And we have two employees that are comfortable being in the library, Amy being one of them. And so um, they're able to request materials and pick them up with um, outside pickup. Great. So, and, and there are lots of resources. The newsletter is sending out lots of resources, and the Facebook page has lots of resources for community members that are at home, especially so that, that are also doing home. Thing. And Amy, if I missed anything, you can feel free to chime in there. Um, thanks, Robin. OK. Does the board have any questions about the, the way the library is proceeding through this very strange time. Sounds good. Thank you. Take care, everybody. You too. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. We had You're somebody else join. Oops. We had somebody else join the call. I'm here, Larry. Okay. Oh, Got that, right. Shannon? <laughs> Just helping Shannon yes, keep her notes straight. <laughs> Okay, you're moving on to approval of the agenda. Oh, I'm um, um, sorry Trini, to interrupt. This is, it's, did have a question. Okay. Uh, I wanted to get an update on the status of the climate solutions resolution letter that the select board is supposed to be sending to our state representatives. Uh, Trini, I, I could answer that. This is uh, okay. Adolfo John. Uh, the select board discussed the, um, the, the the crafting of the letter two meetings ago. Uh, unfortunately, with everything that's happened since then, uh, I have not had a chance to draft it with just issues coming up. Uh, but the board has given me direction on what to include in the letter to then bring to the board for their approval before sending to our legislators. Does the select board want any assistance in drafting that letter? Uh, and if I, if I need any, I'll certainly ask. I think uh, too many cooks in the kitchen would delay the process. It's already been delayed for a while, so. Uh, yeah, but we, we're also dealing with a global pandemic. And I don't mean to be rude, but th there are other issues at hand. Oh, I understand. Hence my offer for providing assistance, understanding that you are busy with other <clears> issues. <throat> Okay. Do we have any other um, out there for public comment? Yeah, so this is Amy, and I'm here as a representative for the Randolph Area Mutual Aid Network. <laughs> I just want to give a quick briefing about the purpose and yeah, no. goals of ramen. Um, this is a community-wide um, network, I guess we could call it, um, that is working to maximize um, the services that each organization can offer to support people during the COVID outbreak, um, also to keep one another informed and to leverage the resources that we share um, to help support our communities. Uh, we serve Randolph, Braintree, Brookfield, and East Granville residents. There are three teams at this point that are active. There's a communications team, a fundraising team, and a volunteer team. The communications team right now is working on um, saturating as much as we can the communities with 
opportunities to know what services are available to them. And one of the activities that we're working on right now is to put together an every door direct mailing. Um, a lot of ramen activities right now are conducted the robust web page, which I hope you have had a chance to look at, um, also postings on Front Porch Forum and so on, but that does no good for folks who don't live in the digital world. So we're working to get uh, literature into the hands of every resident um, so that they know that there are resources available to them if they have a need um, that needs um, and they need support. So uh, the fundraising committee, um, I think that one is pretty self-explanatory. People will be making contributions to support their community members, and they're working on a mechanism to make sure that um, folks are getting the help they need. And the volunteer committee, which is working to take in information from folks who have needs, everything from needing um, deliveries of groceries to help moving to with the organizations and volunteers who have the capacity to help. So uh, that's what we're working on right now. Do you all have any questions? Sounds like a lot of coordination and collaboration. It is, and Linda Anderson with Capstone Community Action has been amazing with um, keeping us on track and bringing together um, the organizations and agencies that can really support the community at this point. So hats off to her. Great. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Amy, this is, um, and everyone, this is Tom Ayers. Um, I've been participating in the weekly uh, Zoom meetings of the Ramen Group and uh, can only um, second part of Amy has said they've been doing some great work. Um, it's perhaps best for me to bring this up during the other business portion of the meeting, but um, the, the ramen group has asked for the the towns of Brookfield, Randolph, and Brain part uh, or founding members of this network, and uh, I would recommend that for a consideration. All that would mean right now is that we would have a, a official representative, if you will, at the table uh, when we meet each week uh, to represent the towns, um, uh, the three towns. So um, just put that out there for everyone's consideration. Also, and, and Josh have also been participating in the meetings as, as uh, their time allows. So. Seems like the town kind of was a founding member, just wasn't official. At least the town. Yeah, uh, w we had a discussion uh, among the founding members, especially the people on the communications team, which includes Amy and myself, um, over the course of the last day or two, as to whether we should officially ask the town through their select board uh, to be sort of sponsoring members of the group. Uh, we didn't want to be so presumptuous as to say, I, 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 in my capacity as the president-elect of the Randolph Rotary Club, which is one of the uh, participating entities in this process. Um, but the, the, the participation by uh, Josh and Adolfo and myself was never really formally in an official town capacity, as I understand it. Would we deal with that under new business? We would. Um, we'll just need to understand what founding member means. Like, what is it? Are you looking for the town to be at the table to help with coordination efforts and whatnot? Or is there, what's the ask of the town? I think that would be part of the expectation. Right now, all of the participating organizations, um, and I can I can list those later in the meeting if we if you want, or I can list them now. There are 16 participating organizations 
mostly made up of area churches, social um, the Kimball Library, the two Rotary Clubs, uh, and the uh, Orange County Sheriff's Office, a whole handful of groups. Um, uh, and really, they're all just participating in the discussion to coordinate different activities. Um, uh, at some point further down the line, uh, there may be uh, a modest financial ask or contribution of some of these organizations, but that's um, th that's something that could come further down the line, and it's not an expectation of participation. Okay. All right. Do we have anything else under public comment? Hi, Trini. This is Heidi. I'd like to give a brief report on our parks. Um, okay. As you know, we closed down our park area, so the tennis courts remain to be closed. Um, we have had a lot of high traffic activity as well in the park and the playground, as well as in the courts, basketball courts. Mm -hmm. um, so I have put multiple signs up. Um, as well as the playground, and that goes along with all the parks and playgrounds across Vermont. Um, and uh, Monday, Sunday night, we had, or during the afternoon, uh, a couple of kids broke into a shack behind the skate park, and that skate park, I mean, ice rink. Um, they pulled out um, a few old ramps that were there. Um, I found them Monday, and I had them removed by the afternoon. Uh, the police had been notified, and we talked to several of the kids. And uh, we are trying to educate them. Like, we get that you're bored, and there's not much to do. But, you know, breaking into a shack is not one of the things to do. Um, so I'm for this group of bikers and kids in the park because it's getting bigger. Um, but everything else is cleaned up on the ice rink. Um, and uh, all, all the programs have been suspended. Um, baseball right now is the only one that we have, and that is not. Uh, we're waiting for guidance from the leagues and the governor. And hopefully we'll have an answer by next week if the baseball season will take off or be canceled officially. So that's all from – oh, and then I, we are still hoping for summer camp. So that's what we've been working on summer um, and getting that staffing kind of ready. But that's also all pending, and hopefully we'll have better, clear guidance within the next couple of weeks. So that's all from so, the rec department. I would tell you uh... – wherever you are tomorrow at 11 o'clock to tune in to the governor's press conference. Uh, yeah. Will do. Yeah. It'll be live on TV and it'll also be on Facebook on his thing usually. Uh, and CAX lots of times live streams it on their website. Yeah. And we've been, I've been meeting with, um, via Zoom uh, with all the Vermont um, Parks and Rec directors, and we're trying to stay all on the same page, and so it's been really great. About summer and the pool. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Any questions for Heidi? Great. Thank you. <coughs> Any other public comment? Hearing none, approval of the agenda. Tom, I move, I move we approve, approve the agenda. agenda. I was going to ask if we could add uh, under other business the Raman question whether the town would be an official founding member. We already added that under new business. We did. Okay. Yep. I'll second the approval of the agenda. Okay. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Consent calendar. This is meeting minutes and warrants. In your packets, you should have the meeting minutes for both the 12th and the emergency meeting on the 24th. Larry moves that we approve the consent. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carrie, new business, the VTrans mileage certificate. This is a an annual process with trans. They ask us to um, certify our highway mileage. Uh, there is in your packets a uh, document uh, that uh, uh, included a background material to confirm that we have the necessary items that uh, show that we are up to date with our highway network inventory. So if the board were to um, uh, approve this, it would just, I would just need a motion and we could use our minutes and one signature as uh, proof that the board confirmed as opposed to all five signatures. Okay, any questions? Motion? Uh, I move to certify the uh, town and bridge, uh, the uh, roads, I guess it's roads, this is the roads, right? Yeah, it is the roads. Highway yeah. mileage. Town roads and bridge standards. Is that part of it? Uh, um, it, it would just be the uh, highway certificate um, um, <coughs> title of document. Uh, yes, the certificate of compliance for town roads and bridge standards. Okay, I move to do that. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Do we have one opposing? No, no, it was a oh, late okay. aye. <laughs> <laughs> Just helping <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> Next up is the water wastewater payment process. Uh, the Water Wastewater Committee met recently to discuss what options uh, they have available to them to to, to uh, ratepayers in the Water District and the Sewer District. Uh, concluding that meeting, our Finance Director uh, reviewed some of the material uh, that the committee discussed and uh, pulled together an action item sheet for the Board to consider uh, and the recommended motion is included. To add more information, this would essentially mimic what the board had previously done with tax payments. Instead of it being a three month uh, delay on tax liens or delinquent water and sewer bill um, penalties, it would only do it for 90 days because 90 days more closely resembles um, when bills are mailed, uh, mailed out for water and sewer payments. Any questions on this? Have we got any feedback that this will be a problem? Or I'm curious why the committee was discussing that. The there may be a requirement for to place a ballot um, or an article on the ballot that asks uh, ratepayers for permission to retroactively approve this. Um, that, that that is that is a holdback. The challenge there is that the ratepayers can say no and. Here it would be roughly between three and five thousand dollars, where uh, the ratepayers would have to then reimburse the town as a whole if uh, the town voters were to decline this. This doesn't have anything to do with the town wide, right? This is just the water district. Right, it would just be the water district, and uh, for for delaying of the penalties and the interest, right? So we may still have to go to 
You're right, Trina. Yeah, we, we would have to ask. We just the, have to go to the water district now. Water district. That's right. Uh, Larry, when this was being discussed in committee, did they see any problem with that passing by the voters? Um, I mean, no. I mean, the, the sense of the committee is that it, that it was a good idea. Um, the, we didn't have the authority, you know, as a as, as a committee to uh, to make this decision, but we did talk about it and think, that, you know, it that it would be pretty nice for at least a small group of people and thought it was worth doing. Okay. Um, and I think, as as Adolfo points out, the, the amount of money involved is is not um, not so large that we really thought it, you know, that that no matter which way it would go, whether the the, the district, you know, ultimately approves it or or doesn't, that um, it didn't it didn't seem to be a significant factor. So when we do our billing. For water and wastewater, are we going to be able to, if somebody's delinquent multiple quarters, will we be able to break out that this one quarter doesn't incur the additional fees, or are we waiving it for their entire bill? That's one of the things we ran into with the property taxes. Yeah, I, I'd have to reconfirm with Cliff. My understanding was that it would be able it would be easy enough for us to break out this 90 day period for fees and interests um but i would have to double check with with cliff okay Adolfo, any other questions that was my impression system yeah if i remember correctly when we were looking at some of the uh, issues with folks that hadn't paid it was broken down by line item according to when the billings were made. Adolfo and Trini, this is Cliff. Mm -hmm. Hey, Cliff. Um, so on the billing system, Trini, can you repeat your question again? When we were, when we were looking at the at waiving the penalty uh, for property taxes, it was going to be real challenging to break out for those that had delinquent taxes prior to the period we were looking at. So my concern was that we didn't back you into a scenario where these people, somebody hadn't paid their prior invoice and you had to try to decide how to break out the interest or penalties on just this, this span of time. So I, I, I think we can do it um, because of the way the billing system works, impose interest balances from a certain date back, and and I believe the motion is written so that the um, the board would be putting a similar 90-day moratorium on those bills so that it would be essentially one billing cycle. Mm -hmm. So if it's um, the cycle, just so we're clear when we about given some of the questions we we're into with the property tax piece, if I didn't pay my last bill and I'm already collecting fees and penalties, is that amount that I owed before this billing cycle going to collect tax and fees during this period, or does it does the motion need to be done so that there's no tax and no interest and penalties accrued during this 90-day period? On, no matter what the... No, we, we can we can continue to accrue interest on the old balances. Okay. That's what we did with taxes, right? That that is correct, Larry. Pat. Sorry, Pat. Pat. Okay. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure we give you the motion so that you can implement it easy. Yep. Yeah. In all your Appreciate spare that. time right now, out doing your photography this morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was done last night. That was not done this morning. <laughs> well, I can tell you the load of stuff went north today. So A&R was on site and shut them down. Uh, that's what I heard. So. Well, there was a lot of emails going around this morning, too. So, 
<laughs> well, by the time it got to me, we already had A&R on site, so. Multiple paths. <laughs> anyway, different issue. Um, <laughs> I need just a few more. Okay, so uh, any other questions on this? If not, we'll entertain a motion. I move that we uh, use the suggested motion that the DOFL has in our paperwork. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the proposal for swimming pool sanding and painting. Uh, yeah, a draft RFP that um, uh, Heidi and I have reviewed and pulled together. Uh, it has a lot of detail in here that's provided by Heidi on what is still uh, needed at the swimming pool. Uh, and much of that has been discussed by the board in the past, and it's mostly just the, the sanding, taking away of the old paint and resurfacing and applying new waterproof paint. And this is just approval to send the RFP out? Approval to, to send out the RFP, and then also um, we would need a motion to allow us to essentially use the $40,000 in the Recreation Equipment Reserve Fund. Would this come back to the board, Adolfo? Uh, the, the, uh, the bids would come back to the board if we have multiple bids. The challenge is, and Heidi's much more familiar with this because she's been dealing with the issue more, more directly, but the challenge is that there are very few uh, people in our general area that could perform this work. Uh, so we may have to do a single source uh, option at that point. The, the board wouldn't have to review the bid again, but we can bring it back, absolutely. I'm I'm here. Sorry, um, if you have any questions on it. Well, I think even if you only have one bidder, it needs to come back to the board for approval. Just yeah. given the refresher course I've recently taken on our procurement policy. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, what you're asking for right now is permission to send the RFP out. Or our RFPs should go out with language in it that allows us to not accept any of them, so I don't see any harm in sending the RFP out. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that or other thoughts? Well, I'd make a move to uh, send out the RFP within the budgeted amount. I'll second that. I'll second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the culvert on the Beanville Road. Uh, this is a project that's been ongoing for a number of years. We finally have sufficient funds to complete the project. Um, we are still working, or I'm still working with Two Rivers and VTRAN to craft more appropriate. Um, and we're also we're, we're also hoping that the town won't have to pay for this project if if funds are made available for infrastructure repair through federal th federal bills. But for now, uh, I would like to ask the board for permission to once this proposal is um, complete and has Two Rivers and VTrans at its, uh, at, uh, I'd be allowed to, to send it out. It's very some responses, or I could also delay sending it out and wait to see what federal legislation uh, does. Um, and I, the reason I, I say the last part, the latter, is because I learned today from VTrans, our, our, our representative, Chris Bump, 
that they would be more than willing to extend our existing grant for expire in 2021, which gives us a whole other year to work with. Yeah, I think um, the only concern I have with sending this out now, the way it's drafted, is it has none of the pieces in it that will be required for a federal grant. Yeah. Um, and there are coming. This is a prime project for us to get 100% funding on. Um it's awesome that we're poised and ready because a lot of towns aren't in that boat, which is going to make us a lot, a lot better positioned to compete for these funds. Um, but I, I think we need to take this bid document and um, my recommendation would be to hang on to it for a little bit. Um, and by next month, know whether we're going to be able to go for federal funding for this or not. I like the idea of it being able to be paid for by 100% federal funding yeah. so there's no cost to the town. Um, and I also like the idea of maybe potentially being able to package it with some other projects at the same time, whether it's Maple Street or or some of that, if we can get all of them funded. But that would be my. I, I I agree, Trini. Yeah, if if it's okay with with you and the board, I'd like to just ask the board to to skip this for now. I'm agreeable with that. I am as well. Sounds good. Do we need a motion to table or just? No, we just skip over it. Okay. We'll see it again on another agenda. It might have a little fancier name on it, though. <laughs> um, question on possible funding. Do we have any idea when applications would be due on? No, they can't even agree on how to put the bill together in Washington. So there's no, you know, the guidance isn't out to the town level yet, um, but the conversations are taking place, some of the what their intent is. We, I've been in on conversations of that. Um, and where, you know, what types of projects they're looking at. Um, we've got some projects in Randolph that we would like to do that are, you know, like expanding water and sewer down the Beanville Road that don't really bring in a lot of long-term jobs but our, will allow us to be poised to bring in uh, additional businesses or to connect some of the folks up on Route 12. Um, we wouldn't compete well in the normal funding because of they're usually looking for sustainable jobs. Some of this money is going to be looking at jobs that you can get people into right now right. to do. So it's they're looking at how many people are going to be employed while that job is taking place versus what the end benefit of jobs is. This, the Beanville Road culvert, Maple Street, redoing Maple Street, um, the water wastewater, connecting the town reservoir, those projects all will compete very well for that type of funding. And they may have already been packaged up and put a bow on um, and put some big numbers on to try and just give some examples of types of community projects that would benefit from this type of stimulus money that don't compete in normal funding pots. So we'll you see what happens. You also have a list of what you're thinking so that the rest of us could be looking at that too. Well, those are the uh, projects that we have going on anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's connecting the wells, um, the new wells to the water system, um, which is a project that's out there that we've been hammering on, on looking for funding to deal with the manganese issue. Um, so that's one of the projects that we have. 
uh, Maple Street and our challenges there. Uh, you know, while we're we're looking at Maple Street and the ch you know you've got the issue of power poles and nobody wants them on their side of the street, so we might as well just increase the size of the project and bury all the power lines while we're at it, right? So 